MSI motherboards are a bit like French Camembert. It's either the perfect mean uh, to get to undistilled uh, culinary heaven or uh, a punishing smelly experience which will haunt you until the day you die. The MPG X570 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi definitely uh, looks like a great cheese, but it stinks so bad. I mean, it, it, it looks great, uh, it weighs great, it, it reads great on paper, but oh man, it smells really, really bad. And I usually do great reviews for MSI. But that's not gonna be one of those. The MSI X570 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi, by the way, always be suspicious of long name motherboard, is here to compete in an extremely crowded segment of the gaming market. I, I, I hate to call it budget, but in an X570 world, it's kind of a budget gaming segment and it's going right head to head against the X570 Tough series from Asus, um, the Steel Legend from ASRock and the excellent uh, Aorus X570 Elite uh, Pro, is it Elite Pro? No, it's, I think just Elite, which I all reviewed and you should be checking if you haven't done so uh, yet, at about 200 bucks, the MSI MPGX570 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi features a lot of features. And, um, you know, when I was reading that list, I was wondering how did they do it? And the real answer is that they've been cutting a lot of corners and corners that they should have never ever cut. Starting with the obvious. We are dealing with a four-layered ATX PCB and that is not good news because um, when you're dealing with a PCIe 4.0 motherboard, that's a lot of bandwidth, a lot of high performing co components and a lot of signal uh, interferences. And the more PCB layers you have on the motherboard, uh, the better isolation you'll get on high bandwidth um, operation. And so that's one thing. And it also helps a lot by propagating or radiating away uh, our VR, the, the heat produced by our VRM. So having only four layers is the bare minimum. It works well for the, uh, for example, the Aorus Elite, uh, which actually has copper plates sandwiched in between those four layers. Uh, but we don't have that with the MSI X570 Gaming Edge, and I'm a little bit worried about the overall stability of, of our motherboard, especially on the long term of things. It is powered by an AM4 CPU socket supporting both Ryzen 2000 and Ryzen 3000 CPU series. Note that the PCIe 4.0 abilities of this board will only be unlocked when coupled with a Ryzen 3000 CPU. VRM-wise, well, this is where I believe MSI really, really messed up. We are dealing with 1050 amps power stages configured in four parallel CPU-centric phases. So about 400 amps of CPU-centric uh, power, which reads great on paper, but because of the subgrade or sub-quality uh, VRM or power stages MSI decided to go with, well, we have a far from agile uh, power delivery and with a horrible uh, uh, heat signature, it's really, really hot in there uh, and, and the four layered PCB really does not help. We're talking about 110 degrees Celsius at the junction point when overclocking uh, eight core processor. So we do have a lot of power, but the, the the potential thermal throttling and the dangerous overheating of your motherboard will prevent you from uh, doing anything interesting in terms of overclocking. And I think that MSI was aware of this point and, and that's why they really tried to provide really, really good uh, heat sinks with it. And, and, and to their credit, they are indeed very good. We have this extended heatsink design that MSI is known for and that provides a lot of radiating surface and a rather tall side heatsink. And even though these are very good passive cooling components, they're not enough uh, to radiate all that VRM overheating 
away. Memory wise, we have our usual dual channel able to support up to 128GB of DDR4 RAM. Coupled with a Ryzen second generation, they are overclockable up to 3.6GHz, but coupled with a third generation of Ryzen CPU and you will be able to push them up to an impressive 44 gigahertz. Obviously this is one of the many uh, performance gain you get from coupling your X570 powered motherboard with a Ryzen 3000 uh, CPU series. Staying in the memory, our motherboard can support up to two horizontal M.2 solid state drives, which coupled with a second gen Ryzen CPU will go as fast as a PCIe 3.0 standard will allow them to go, meaning 32 gigabit per second. But again, couple the board with a third generation of Ryzen CPU and you will unlock the Garkant-esque PCIe 4.0 bandwidth abilities of your board and our compatible M.2 solid state drive sticks will see speeds up to 64 gigabit per second. PCIe 4, brother, PCIe now, in either mode, these sticks will be producing a lot of heat, and that is why we have a gigantic thermal padded heat shield. And I mean, this thing is ridiculously huge and big, and I think MSI called this the Razor uh, heat sink. And I'll give it to them, it's, it's so thick and big, and it, it works. It absolutely does work, and it does keep your M.2 solid state drive as cool as it can be. So if you do have as intent to boot from your M.2 solid, solid state drive, this is where I would place it indeed. Now a little word on our chipset. Our X570 chipset has twice the heat signature than its predecessor, which explains the presence of an active cooling solution. And usually uh, manufacturers use 60,000 hours graded delta turbine fans, which are great because they're very durable and, they'll make, and they don't make as much noise as other classical fans. And of course, MSI, not missing a single opportunity to get something wrong with this board, decided not to go with that solution, which is usually is a great solution. They went for a classical uh, fan, and it's sure it's a double ball bearing fan. It's just a simple fan. I don't know how many hours it's graded. Of course, they don't put it on their website, which makes me believe that it's probably 20 to 30,000 hours and has a hit sync goes. It's not great either. It's, it's shallow, it's slight, it's, I mean, this is, the exact opposite that you'd see on, say, a gigabyte slash hours motherboard, which showcased what an 11 watt chipset really needs. Something heavy, thick, a bit like me. I mean, it will do the job, okay? But it'll be more noisy and less durable. So not such a great point uh, for MSI there. Export wise, we have five PCIe slots, three single slot, single speeds, to 16 slots with different speeds. Only the closest one to the CPU has 16 PCIe lanes. Therefore, this is where you'd want your single GPU to be placed for optimal performances. It also explains the presence of our metallic reinforcement. Our second 16 slot has been capped up to four PCIe lanes, not the fastest to support a video card and, and hence uh, the absence of metallic reinforcement. And that's what I would say if you were stuck with a PCIe third uh, generation or, or 3.0 standard, but because going from PCIe 3.0 to PCIe 4.0 means going from one gigabyte per second per lane to two gigabyte per second per lane, which gives us more bandwidth than needed to uh, operate, say, a 2080 at optimal speed on the second PCIe uh, 16 slot. So I would have loved to see a metallic reinforcement even on the second uh, PCIe 16 slot. Now, sidebar. PCIe 4 providing twice the bandwidth of PCIe 3. Some of you may say, oh, but Laurent, this means we will double the performances of our video card. Oh, child. Cards we have today on the market are yet to surpass the PCIe 3.0 bandwidth abilities. So even if you had a PCIe 4.0 enabled video card with a PCIe 4.0 enabled uh, motherboard, you're not gonna see any uh, gaming performances gain. Uh, at least with what's available today. You're gonna have to wait another six months or a year to see what uh, GPU manufacturer is gonna come up with and, and see how much bandwidth they're gonna need. And, and then we will see something really tangible. But till then, the only advantage I can tell or see on PCIe 4.0 exports is serious future proofing or superior multi -G multiple GPU uh, uh, support, which is not 
what this kind of board is made for. So yeah, end of sidebar. Now, storage-wise, we do have six SATA third generation, which can bottleneck our data transfer to a very slow and disappointing six gigabit per second, but that has nothing to do with MSI. This is uh, a standard I'm, 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 I'm tired of for the, for the last five years. I want to see something better, especially with PCIe 4.0 enabled motherboards, and hopefully in the next year we'll get there. Hopefully. Back IO wise, well, first let me know the presence of an integrated IO plate, which is always a good thing. Starting from the left, we have a flash BIOS button, rarely present at this price range, so I don't want to take it away. Kudos to MSI. A mouse keyboard PS2 connector, two 480 megabit second generation USB plugs, a 802.11 AC dual band Wi Fi adapter, which would provide up to 1.73 gigabit per second. And here I am again disappointed because X570 motherboards usually come with a newer 802.11 AX standard, which pushes our Wi-Fi ability to Wi-Fi 6 at about 2.73 gigabit per second, which is, you know, quite a bit faster. So I'm, I'm a little bit lost on why we're, we're, we're back at AC standard here. Again, lazy, lazy coming from MSI. Two five gigabit USB third generation plugs, four hybrid USB plugs, which will run up to 10 gigabit per second when coupled with a Ryzen 3000 series and up to five gigabit per second with coupled with a Ryzen 2000 series. A gigabit LAN, an integrated HDMI 1.4 output and a rather mid-range eight channel ALC 1220 Realtek codec. And I have no complaints about it, it's actually quite good as an audio experience, both in gaming and in a recording uh, a configuration. Um, overall, despite a remark or two, the, the back IO is, is, is surprisingly well featured, and so that's another kudos to MSI. Front panel connector-wise, well, we are in the expected range, nothing more. We have a couple of 480 megabit per second front panel connectors, two 5 gigabit front panel connectors, and no 10 gigabit Type-C, which is not very surprising. Uh, I don't think uh, many motherboards at that price range feature them, but it's always disappointing knowing the gargantuesque uh, ability of the X570 chipset. Cooling-wise, we have six PWM front panel connectors, one of which can support an all-in-one or dedicated water pumps. So potentially you could run uh, a, a very basic single loop uh, custom water cooling uh, you know, solution on, on your build, but I'm, I'm not disappointed. I am mad, and not only to MSI, to a lot of uh, manufacturers not to have included hybrid fans or to replace their PWM fans with hybrid fans, which so far I've only seen in gigabyte slash hours boards, uh, which allows us to use the same connectors, not only on fans, but also in pumps and water flows, meaning that you can have five or six connectors and, and have five or six water pumps, five or six water, it doesn't matter. It's simpler, doesn't cost more, it's just where uh, the oil industry should be going. And, and yeah, so it's not a critic, especially for MSI, but another other disappointment, which I'm getting used to with this board. And finally, this would not be, a gamer motherboard without a heavy-handed RGB presence sprinkled all around our board, starting with an addressable RGB strip nested in our PCB and four RGB connectors, two normal and two addressable. So uh, in lack of performances, at least you can use your build as a Christmas tree. In conclusion, the MPG X570 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi will cost you about 200 bucks before taxes. And in view of the long list of features, yes, it might look like a great deal. Um, but truth be told, it is heavily handica uh, handicapped from an inefficient and overheating VRM. Those are real design flow and, and, and this could have been someone fixed uh, by adding two additional PCB layers, both in stability, durability of your system and in dissipation of our power stages. Of course, it would have added a little bit more to the cost, but I think we would not have, you know, uh, minded to pay $15 more to get that fixed. This is also the problem of the chipset. I don't like the heatsink. I don't like the fact that we have a mechanic. Like this fan is, is, is really, doesn't feel durable to me and it makes 
way too much noise. So the question is, is this a no deal? Well, like everything in life, it all depends. If you're going to go for a processor which has six or less physical cores, um, yeah, maybe th that is a good option, okay? Um, especially if you have a cell and you know you're gonna be at, yeah, like I said, six and less, you'll be fine. You're not gonna have any overheating. You're not gonna have stability issues. If you go on a go for heavy overclocking or high core count, I would seriously, seriously stay clear from this thing. And, and I will just send you to anything else. And, and especially either the, the Aorus Elite or uh, the Tough. Uh, X570, which both I have reviewed and really would would cost you about the same or a bit cheaper or more like ten dollars more or less, but really would give you what you expect from a good uh, budget uh, X570 motherboard. It, it simply looks like a board which has been put together by a marketing team rather than engineered. And I'm probably gonna get in trouble with MSI for this review, but you know what, MSI, when it's a miss. It's a miss.